Welcome to this short video from Hornet Security Altaro on Microsoft Defender for Identity. My name is Paul Schnackenberg. I'm going to start off with the installation here. Um, and this is, of course, the accompanying piece to the article on Defender for Identity. So we're going to head down to Settings. And uh, in Settings, we are going to go to Identities which is the new home of uh, the settings for Microsoft Defender for Identity. It's in preview, public preview at the moment. So we need to set up sensors and then we're going to look at some of these other settings around entity tags and alert notifications, etc. We need to add a sensor. So this goes on a domain controller, a standalone server if you absolutely can't get it onto a domain controller or an Active Directory Federation Services server if you're monitoring those as well. So we start off by copying out the access key that will identify to the installer uh, which tenant it's going to be connected to. And then we download the installer. This takes a little bit of time. It's still the Azure ATP sensor setup. It hasn't uh, struck through there that it's now Defender for Identity. Uh, Azure ATP, of course, is the old name. That comes down as a zip file, and we unpack that. Notice the NP cap there. Uh, so for a long time, uh, Defender for Identity sensors have been using WinP cap, but it's no longer uh, a supported product, so they've switched to NP cap. Talks a little bit about it here and why they're doing it. There is a link in the readme file that comes in the zip file. Talks about this. It's really not a big deal. If you've got the latest installers, you're going to get NPCAP as well. The only time you really need to take this into account is if you are going to upgrade an existing installation. Then we run the installer. Uh, we pick our language. We, uh, it has automatically detected that it's going on a domain controller, so it's going to install the sensor rather than the standalone sensor and the ADFS sensor. So uh, here's where we paste in the access key that we copied out earlier. From uh, Notepad, we paste that in here. And um, that's about it. We hit the install button and it's going to install. Um, takes a minute and I've sped up sped it up here of course for the video so it's no big deal there the next thing big thing and so now we can see the sensor showing up in the cloud service it's detected the version and that the service status is uh, starting at this point okay so um, next up we need a directory services account so this is the account that's going to read information out of active directory now this used to be just an ordinary account, but you can actually use group managed service accounts nowadays, which is a better solution because you can use them across all your domain controllers and their um, passwords are automatically rolled over. So following the instructions in the documentation, I create a new GSM, GMSA, Group Managed Service Account, um, and I give it a name, and uh, I also need to give that specific account logon as a service um, on all domain controllers, and because I've got 2012 R2 uh, or later, 2012 or later, and this is a 2022 domain controller, I can go in here and I can add that into um, computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, local security settings, I think. Yep, security settings and then uh, local policies and then user rights assignments. And under there, we got log on as a service. Got to configure that. Um, if you had earlier domain controllers, you have to create this in a uh, separate uh, GPO. Anyway, now putting in just a name there, as I'm doing here, is a bad idea because that's actually not going to identify the account. What you need to do, so I want to remove that. What you need to do is you need to go browse, do a search in the directory for the group managed service accounts uh, or service account, and then it's going to find it and add the dollar at the end. So that's the account uh, added to log on as a service, and that's now ready. So now we can head back into the Defender for Identity portal and we can configure the right settings. 
So um, we're going to tick that this is a group managed service account. I'm going to type the domain name uh, in case you have a multi-domain forest or even um, multiple forests. Uh, you can have up to 30 accounts, I think, uh, for a, a multi-domain slash multi-forest setup with Defender for Identity. You do want to have one so that it can correlate information between them if you have a large environment like that. So now it's got the account, so now it needs to understand how to read the information. Now we can look at some of these other settings here. So sensitive accounts is, you know, your CEO accounts, those sorts of things. Um, you want to make sure you add in a recipient email for health notifications and problems with your Defender for Identity. And um, depending on your environment, you want to set up an alert notification here as well. Under syslog, you can configure uh, integration with um, um, data recipients that, that uh, deals with syslog. You can now see that this is running. Uh, it's not on delayed update, so it will update as soon as there is an update available for the agent. So that's it really. Now we can go back in. There's a couple of integration things we want to do. So we want to look at the endpoint settings. And under endpoint settings, if you are using Defender for endpoint, you want to integrate the two. And it's uh, literally just a slider um, a little bit further down. And there it is, Defender for identity integration. There's actually two sliders. There's this one here that you need to do. So that's on the Defender for endpoint side. You also need to do it for the cloud service side. And for some reason, I couldn't find that settings in the new portal but it's in the old portal, the portal.aatp.azure.com. So that's where I integrated that and turned that integration on in that end. And once that's done, uh, now it's just a matter of waiting for the attackers to come and do their thing. And um, they will show up under incidents. So unless you're integrating with Sentinel or, or another um, third party seam, of course, but um, if you have any attacks against your Active Directory, they will now show up in this incidents page here and you can see different sources here. I've got Office 365 and Defender for Cloud um, or Defender for Cloud Apps, sorry. And um, you can see those detection sources in here. You can see some that are detected against uh, on multiple services, in this case, both Microsoft Defender for Office and Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps in that particular one. You can also go and look at alerts. Um, if there are any alerts coming from Defender for Identity, they will show up here in this portal or in this blade rather. Uh, and finally, we can do uh, advanced hunting. So we can use KQL uh, against the tables that are available in Microsoft 365 Defender. And we can see some that comes from Defender uh, for Identity here, directory events, um, and uh, those sorts of things here. And that is available for us. You can see the, um, the um, description of what each of those tables are. And if we look um, under uh, queries up here, that's where you can save your own queries. And then we have, um, detection rules and under detection rules there are kql queries you can run against your um, your uh, data that is stored in defender for endpoint and defender for identity i hope you found that useful i uh, hope you enjoy the article uh, thank you for your time and attention